Welcome to the channel. My name is Matias. Today, we're going to talk about my all-time favorite Hank Pym slash Ultron story. It's called The Rage of Ultron. It came out in 2015, written by Rick Remender. It's a standalone story, and I feel like it's the definitive story for both of these characters. So the story starts with a flashback. We have the Avengers fighting against Ultron. I guess it's the late 70s, early to mid 80s. Marvel sliding timeline makes things confusing. So you have Beast on the team, and during this time, Hank Pym is Yellow Jacket. We have the Avengers fighting against Ultron, and Ultron is just killing people left and right, and he's trying to get the nuclear launch codes to wipe out all of humanity. This is pretty much standard Ultron procedure in all of his stories. So while this battle's raging on between the Avengers and Ultron, I love that Remender drops a couple lines, how the Avengers themselves really resent the fact that Pym created Ultron in the first place. And he's sort of not really helping with the battle, but what's happening is Hank is actually setting up a trap for Ultron. With the help of Wasp, they actually trick Ultron to think that Hank Pym is dying. He's trapped in the squint jet that Ultron had taken down. Ultron immediately disengages with the battle. He goes to confront his father with Cody Fingers. Now the dialogue that we get between Pym and Ultron, it's very well done. Where basically Hank tells him, look, I failed you as a father. That he should have done much, much more to help Ultron find his place in the world, find meaning in his existence. And I really love how Ultron is very focused on the fact that he's seeking validation from Hank Pym in his very, very sick way. Now the thing is that Hank Pym is able to reach Ultron. He drops his guard and that's when they snap the trap. He's captured. And basically what they do is they shoot Ultron into outer space. That's sort of like a thing with superheroes in general. Like if they don't know what to do with the villain, they shoot him into space, they shoot him into the sun, they shoot him into a black hole or to another dimension. So now we cut to the present day. We have the Avengers dealing with the group of cyborgs called the Descendants. They were like the main villains to Avengers AI. It was an Avengers team led by Hank Pym, but the rest of the team were all cyborgs or androids. I'm not sure what's the proper term. So they had a ton of dealings with these descendants. And I'm not sure what happened to Hank Pym during the series, but now he feels like very dark and grizzled. He just doesn't want to deal with these guys anymore. We have the situation where the Avengers immediately go into battle against the descendants. They have rescued one of those Red Skull Sentinels that I really hated from the Axis crossover. And what happens is when Hank Pym joins the battle, he has this device that when he sets it off, all the descendants die. So the rest of the team sort of really freaks out over the situation that he sort of killed all these robots, like killed with Cody Fingers. But Vision is really flipping out over this whole situation. And Hank Pym actually tells Vision, look, you're the exception to the rule. Like every other AI and cyborg and android out there who has consciousness has tried to kill everyone and take over the world every other day. So I guess Pym totally forgot about the time Vision did try to take over the world back in the 80s. But the basic idea that the writer's trying to give us with this story is that Hank Pym is just tired of artificial intelligence. He doesn't want to deal with it anymore. He just basically hates robots and androids. Hank Pym actually tells Vision, look, there are things that you can turn off. They don't die. And Vision is totally appalled by this whole situation because basically Hank Pym is sort of like his grandfather. So while all this is going down, Ultron's ship lands on Titan. It's the worst place in all of the galaxy where it can land because the whole planet is controlled by a artificial intelligence called Isaac. So what happens is Ultron is able to take over the planet itself and infect everyone on it and they all become Ultron drones. Star Fox is the only one able to get off the planet. He goes to Earth to warn the Avengers but he's too late. So now we have Titan in Earth's orbit and we have this planet-sized Ultron or actually moon-sized Ultron. It looks really awesome. So he's attacking Earth, trying to convert as many people as possible into these Ultron drones. And obviously he's cunning for the Avengers especially. So now we have half the Avengers team converted into Ultron drones. And what happens with Hank Pym, he wants to use the same weapon that he used on the Descendants. He knew that Ultron was coming. That's why he developed it in the first place. And the story shows that Hank really doesn't care for the infected. He thinks they're lost by now. And he's just hell-bent on trying to stop Ultron. And we have Vision and Falcon Cap trying to counterbalance Pym's brash decisions, trying to find another way. And Vision actually hatches up a plan where he's going to try to fuse himself to Ultron and set off Hank's weapon in such a way that it's just going to kill both of them. So Ultron actually tells Hank Pym, look, in that very long flight to Titan, 
I discovered that you used your brainwaves to create me and that I have all your old memories. He does actually tell Pim, look, I know what makes you tick and what makes you tick has converted me into a monster. Then he tells Pim, look, all your antisocial behaviors in me are taken up to 11. So basically everything bad that I've done, it's your fault. So they spring the trap and things go horribly wrong because what happens is Ultron ends up fusing with Hank Pym. They become one being. We actually get the birth of Pymtron, a very interesting version of this character. So we get this final showdown between Falcon Cap and Ultron. It's the Avengers last stand here. When Star Fox jumps into the battle, he uses his love powers in a very interesting way. He actually forces with his powers Pymtron to love himself, to have self-esteem. And what happens is Pimtron can't deal with these emotions. It actually breaks him. So the day has been saved and Ultron goes flying into outer space. He stops his attack. We have the Avengers mourn the death of Hank Pym. So I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.